I think the thing is with 2000 AD, I think it is going to get to a stage. It's, it's left young readers behind to a certain extent. I mean, they will be drawn in when they get to a certain stage of sophistication of the reading doesn't. comics. You're not mm -hmm. going to get the kids in, you know, the eight-year-olds reading 2000 AD because it is so much more sophisticated than it was in a certain context. And the reason is, is because the people who are now producing 2000 AD, they're all still fans. I mean, the people who own 2000 AD Rebellion, they're still like in their early 40s. You know, and they're the guys who were reading it when they were 10, 11, and 12. And all the creators now, it's like a, more or less in that age bracket as well, you know, the late 20s maybe, mm -hmm. early 30s and so on. I mean, aging guys like myself and uh, a wonderful young-looking cam over there. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be retired, of course, but uh, it's one of those things where it's like the young people are now doing the business that, you know, we were doing 20-odd years ago, and it's great that I'm still allowed to totter in and sort of give my pages into the editor, who looks about 16 anyway. If you that. He looks about 16. But a couple of years ago, actually probably about 10 years ago, when I came back again, from wherever I was doing elsewhere. I went into one of the Christmas parties and so like meeting a lot of new contributors. I don't I think I was the only old face there. And I was talking to some of the new contributors and the first guy came up to me and said, oh, I'm, I'm re you know, he's the writer of whoever he was, sort of thing. It wasn't that. Well, he didn't have a beard then anyway. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And uh, just chatting away sort of thing, he said, oh, I'm a really big fan of your work. I was reading since I was eight and he was in his mid-twenties. Oh, that's nice. And then the second person came up, was in his mid-20s, and said, oh, I used to read you when I was eight. And I got really pissed off at that. So <laughs> was eight girls had grown up 20 years, and, and now I was working with them, which was very good for me anyway, but... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's harder to get young kids interested in a comic that's effectively called 10 years ago? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that's not that interesting yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a brand name now. That's more, you know, it's there was all the hoo ha when. I like when the idea of like retro science fiction. Science fiction that almost mm. happened but didn't, or went a different way. Mm. So it's 2008. So yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's a suspension of disbelief well, thing. If you can get past that, you'll you'll go in with the kind of the comic with the right mindset. But you can't you can't say the name, and it doesn't conjure it, to me anyway. You say the name, and it doesn't conjure up. I just wonder if it sounds different. When no, you're used it, to it it well. It would have been weird to have called it 3000 AD or 2100 AD or something. It, it, it just wouldn't have worked. And, and I, I remember the hoo-ha, you know, sort of leading up to the year 2000, about, well, what were they going to call it? No, because we've caught up with the, the actual yeah. name. And I think they took the right idea. They just didn't bother. They just didn't do anything. They just kept the title going in, in the, the actual title, you know, and I think... You say it so often, like we've been saying it, 2000 AD, 2000 AD, you know, yeah. it's just, it's just, a brand. It's just words, it's just a brand now, you know, it, it well, doesn't you, even sum up. Well, you think you know, about the, the logo, 2000 AD, about 1980, I had a pal, and he was telling me that his daughter was going to the news agent every week to get a copy of Zulad. They're really thinking, of, you know, in advance. They should have, when he first launched the comic, should have just called it 3000 AD and been mm. done with it, you know, because then, you know, they got a long way to go then. <laughs> but then there was probably the thought that it wasn't going to last. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it lasted last until 2008. Yeah. Yeah. This comic ain't going to last you know, 23 years, years or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. from that year, what other comics still exist? Pretty much none. No, apart from the Dandy and Vino, I don't think yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 And even, even Dandy and Vino have reinvented themselves so thoroughly mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, absolutely. But it's. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they have. I'm just saying it's a very different Dandy and Dino than, but it's a very different 2000 AD as well, I guess, so in some ways. That's, that's quite a demographic now for 2000 AD, is it all sort of over 30 or? I'd, I'd, I'd probably, I don't know. the majority I'd say, it's, yeah. it's just across the board with comics in general, I think the demographic is that. Over 18 I guess. Yeah. I thought was uh, doing a 2000 AD junior, you know, so perhaps. That's been tried cool. to do that once, yeah. didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Back in the eighties or nineties, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I can't remember. What it's uh, called. Earth Soy Eight. Sorry. Well, Earth Soy. Oh, 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 there was, was that. Uh, that was the big one. Uh, that was, was the movie tie, wasn't it? It was Heroes, and then I think they 
did another dummy called Earthside Eight, that's and that's where Di- that's where Dynasty came from, and uh, a couple of other strips. Terrible title. Earthside Eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Eighty-two of you all sort of really internet savvy. They might not understand the comics at all, and it's a sort of uh, online sort of thing with online content. Well, mm. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, starting starting a new comic could be a huge risk for. Well, it depends I'm which having, company. I'm having so discussions right now in, in New York with uh, some publishing people. I can't talk about it, but they were trying to think, they trying to do an American 2008. Not necessarily science fiction, but the idea of an anthology comic where we can do like six, ten pages a week on, on, for a story a week. And we can actually keep a lot of artists who can't do 22 pages a month um, in, in enough work to pay their, their, their rent mm-hmm. and let them do a regular ongoing story at the same time maybe doing something else on the side because you know it's really limiting being an artist you are so committed to a project for such a long period of time you really don't have anywhere else to go and it's frustrating sometimes mm. you know, trying to kind of do two or three things at once all the time i, th- I think i think the template if you're going to do a, an anthology is is you know like i said if they're thinking about doing a you know is, is to adopt that loss leader approach and do the anthology but with you to always collecting the strips at the end of it so you can make your money claw the money back on on the on the books you might hopefully sell because you've already published the stuff so it's cheap enough to collect it and put it as a dark horse presents used to work yeah Yeah. and pretty much however it how pretty much how every european (laughs) anthology magazine works yeah yeah they every you know Every European anthology magazine was, was basically a showcase for the books. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's like in the old days, the single, the album. You know, the single yeah. was the lead, was the advert for the album. You know, and it's the same sort of thing. Again, 2008 is unique in its approach because you know, <coughs> even though they do collect stories, no one really sort of perceives it to be um, a kind of. Uh, you know, an advert for a, a collection. Nobody's waiting for trades. I'm not aware no. of that. I'm not waiting yeah. for they collect enough of them, but yeah. It, it's yeah. No one waits for them. I think most people who read two thousand eight read the weekly. They don't sort of yeah. wait and pick up the, a collection of dread or a collection of whatever people have worked on them. You know, quite often it's both. Yeah. And also, singles were always lost leaders, weren't they? Back when singles you yeah. to sell a lot of singles to get in the top ten, unlike now. You used to have to sell a hell of a lot of singles, like a million singles or something. Yeah, well, it wasn't a lost leader then, but back, you know, sort of like I think said. they still lost money. Or so, they weren't, it was always they'd make the money on the albums. Mm. It was always, even though they sold lots of singles, the major, well, the same majority were lost leaders then, not, yeah. not the. I mean, definitely when we got to about the 90s, you know, when CDs and everything were in and singles were just plummeting, you know, that was, yeah. that was the complete lost leader, you know, that people, yeah, record companies would still release singles. Because it was perfect advertising for the album, you know. But then people go out and buy the album. But yeah, same, same situation with an anthology comic <coughs> nowadays, you know. So that that I cannot personally, I cannot see an anthology comic working in America unless it was ad- 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 adapted to that sort of template, you know. You know how they package two thousand D or Titan or Diamond? They package up in packets of four, <coughs> and you buy them shrink wrapped. Yeah. Every month, well, if you can get them, yeah. Is that how they do it in the states? Yeah. yeah. Package four of them. Can they bother dealing with the weekly? <coughs> yes. It's more difficult than making them. DC tried it. DC tried Wednesday it. comics. Wednesday comics. Yeah, but yeah. It, it but it was a mini series. Yeah. yeah. True. You know, twelve yeah. issues. Twelve issues. So it was an experiment. I mean, it's Mark Giarello's experiment to try and prove that the format could work, and unfortunately, it didn't because people sell? just well, it sold. The first few issues sold, and people went, wait a minute, this is four bucks. I could just wait. At the end of this, I'm going to have to spend like 50 bucks on this set. And I can just wait until the collective edition comes out and it'll, it'll only cost like 25. Yeah. So this is actually economically stupid. If they'd just given it away for free, or like 50 cents, then they might have made some... Yeah, the, the, the bad mis- the yeah. mistake they made was, was charging that amount Tried of to, money. Yeah, charging for comic prices for money. Yeah, for, yeah. for a cheap... Well, the idea was it to be a throwaway, well, a weekly thing, a throwaway yeah. thing. And, and the mistake they made was get virtually every single big name creator you can imagine. So you kind of think, well, that's not cheap for starting. Because yeah. I, I presume none of them are saying, I'll do it for nothing because it's Plus, such a good idea. You know, so a lot of a lot of those guys and this, uh, a lot of the, you kind of got the impression that they were sprinting when they were used to marathons. 
if you see what I mean, in that the um, you you had these single page episodes and you weren't really getting much. You were getting some lovely, beautiful, absolutely mm. phenomenal art, but you weren't getting that much story. No, in you single weren't. Page. No, no, you weren't. Some of them um, were just like complete wastes of time. Yeah. Well, there was one. There was one. The, the Superman story. Um, yeah. The first seven episodes of it was Superman feeling a bit depressed. <laughs> and he looked very beautiful as he felt depressed, but it's sort of, you've got one page of Superman, and, and you five can tell panels, the whole Superman story yeah, in one page. Five you know. panels on the page, and yeah. it's this massive it's, format, and you just think, yeah. that, that's one that, The Americans invented that storytelling from Milton Kuniff, was actually yeah. a master of making this little tiny, mm. little half page section, which is a complete story into itself, and hung, set, set you with a cliffhanger for the next page, the next episode. And that, that was the definitively American form of, of doing things. And he seemed to have almost lost it. Yeah. I mean, you see, the Wonder Woman one. Well, I was oh. going to say the Wonder Woman one worked. The storytelling was like really, uh, what's going on? But I mean, it was all had to go from panel to panel. Yeah, it was. They but, really made use of the space. But they made use of the space, and it was like you know, twenty odd panels a page, and yeah. it was one complete story each and, each episode. And, and, yeah, the, and in that sort of respect, so that was the one that worked for Superman or, or the Neil Gaiman. The Flash one, Metal. which was like two. That was quite two happy page strips. Yeah. That was a nice that one. That ran, ran to, and it was the Flash in Iris West. Iris West was this sort of apartment 3G style soap opera thing, and the Flash was, you know, this action strip. And they ran together mm. because they, they reflected each other, they related to each other. And then merged about halfway through, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I thought that was really a really cute kind yeah. of little. But yeah, you're right. It'll just be, yeah. I mean, if, they'd, if, yeah. if DC would have carried on with it, you know, the whole point, you know, in the end, it, it was just a gimmick. I would, I would love to like, see. Wednesday Comics 2, but I don't think it'll ever happen, but I think that is the one that they would get completely right. If the only way to do Wednesday Comics 2 is to get, well, like you say, get people that are genuinely interested in doing that format, yeah. I think. Yeah. And not necessarily just get the big names, just get people who are genuinely interested in doing a one page and get people to write decent it's stories for I think, I think it's the, the reference to the earlier panel I did with the web comics is that web comics are the new, the new kind of daily strips, the new newspaper strips, and that kind of yeah. like tight, short form writing. Comes, is coming back in because you've got to keep people interested enough to, mm. to come back next week or in a couple of days. And then you have to write that way. You have to build it up, give you a satisfying arc of story, and then leave them with something that they're going to remember. And that's actually quite tight and difficult to write. I mean, I, I'm learning to write now doing, doing that in my webcomic. And uh, vastly inspired by, by Wagner and yeah. Charles and these guys. You can do that stuff. Really. Yeah. Keep turning out these, these snappy episodes. Mm -hmm.